I thank you, God, that you have called Pastor Roger and you have anointed him and you have blessed him. Father, I thank you for the mantle and the anointing you've placed on my husband. I acknowledge it in the name of Jesus. And I just invite your Holy Spirit right now to flow through him. The floodgates of heaven are open. Just funnel it through my husband as a portal to deliver revelation and understanding of your word by your spirit and by your word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So again, Bible study, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about a victorious view of, you know, a lot of things that we have been, uh, there's been a lot of misinformation, and I believe, um, you know, a lot of bad teaching around uh, Matthew 24, Matthew 25, the book of Revelation, Daniel's 70th week, um, that have really kind of, like, I think, uh, taken the church and put us on the sidelines instead of being participants you know, in, in our country and in the world and being real difference makers. A lot of, a lot of the church has adopted doctrines that just disempower uh, the church, you know, and, and we're here to be difference makers, you know. If we, we Christians have the, the rights and the responsibilities to be the most optimistic, joy-filled people in the world. <laughs> and so we should be full of life, full of joy, full of light, and full of optimism. Amen? Because we, we carry the hope of glory in us. We carry Christ in us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen? You know, and uh, praise God, that's, that's, that's our opportunity, man. We, we get to walk around and be filled with joy and not with doom. Praise God. I'm going to read Psalm 37. It's not in the notes, so praise God. I'm just going to read it. I'm just going to read it. I don't even know if it has anything to do with the message. <clears throat> Psalm 37. Do not fret because those who are evil, because of those who are evil. Or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like the green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Praise God. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed. <laughs> but Don't mean to laugh. <laughs> but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the earth. That's where I'm supposed to laugh. <laughs> A little while in the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked. <laughs> we do too. <laughs> For he knows their day is coming. Man, this is in the Bible. What? The wicked draw the sword and bend the bow to bring down the poor and needy, to slay those who, whose ways are upright. But their swords will pierce their own heart and their bows will be broken. Better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken. But the Lord upholds the righteous. The blameless spend their days under the Lord's care. Wow. Wow. Under the Lord's care. But their inherit and their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither. You're not going to wither no matter what. Okay? You're not going to wither no matter what. In days of famine, you will enjoy plenty. But the wicked will perish. Though the Lord's enemies are like the flowers of the field, they will be consumed. They will go up in smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. Those the Lord blesses will inherit the land, but those he curses will be destroyed. The Lord makes him 
makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble. You know what? You may stumble. Guess what? You're not going to fail. Amen. He will not fail. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. I was young, and now I'm a little bit older. That's not exactly how it reads. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. They are always generous and lend freely. Their children will be a blessing. Praise God. Isn't it awesome to know that the Lord says your children are going to be a blessing? Your children are going to be a blessing. Turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves the just, and he will not forsake his faithful ones. Wrongdoers will be completely destroyed. Their offspring, the offspring of the wicked will perish. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouths of the righteous utter wisdom, and their tongues speak what is just. The law of their God in their hearts, their feet do not slip. The wicked lie in wait for the righteous, intent on putting them to death. But the Lord will not leave them in the power of the wicked or let them be condemned when brought to trial. Praise God. Hope in the Lord and keep his way. He will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are destroyed, you will see it. I have seen a wicked and ruthless man flourishing like a luxuriant native tree, but soon he passed away and was no more. Though I looked for him, he could not be found. Consider the blameless, observe the upright, if future awaits those who seek peace. Praise God. But all the sinners will be destroyed. There will be no future for the wicked. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in times of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Listen, this is the word of the Lord. Right, it's Psalm 37. I want you to study that verse. I want you to study those verses. I want you to meditate on those verses. Okay? We get to take refuge in the Lord. He is our strong tower. He is our fortress. It's in him we trust. When we put our trust in other things, we can be let down. But God never fails. His righteousness endures forever. His mercy endures forever. His grace endures forever. His peace endures forever. His kingdom endures forever. Praise God. And we get to participate at a higher level. You know, we get to participate at a higher level. We're called to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. That's, that's what we get to do. You know, Romans 8, 6 says to, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Amen. Amen. I like life and peace. Okay. I like life and peace. And if I want to participate in life in peace, I have to think at a higher level. I have to think according to God's word, God's precious promises. I have to think according to Psalm 37. I have to think about what I am seeing from a heavenly perspective. Okay, Colossians 3, verses 1 through 3, 1 through 4, that first, that first cluster of verses is so precious to me. It's, you know, it says, we need to set our hearts and our minds in the heavenly places where we are now seated in Christ Jesus. Amen. Because, because, because uh, we have already died and now we are hidden. We are hidden with him. Amen. And when we think from the heavenly perspective, when we think from a higher perspective, it allows us to live from heaven to earth. Okay. As believers, as people of faith, we are called to live from heaven to earth. When we are carnally minded, we're living from earth to heaven. Okay, so Jesus was talking to his, actually Jesus was talking to the Pharisees. Let's go to um, let's go to Luke chapter 17. 
verse 20. Now, when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation. So you're looking for it. Nor will they say, Oh, look, here it is. It's over here, or it's over there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Now, Jesus is talking about the kingdom. You know, when we, when, when we got born again, and if you've never been born again, today's the day. I'm telling you, today's the day. You know, Scripture is super clear. You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and the Father has raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Okay? What that means is when you come to a revelation knowledge, and if you've, if you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ, you're never too young and you're never too old and you've never, you've never done too many things. Jesus, when he went to the cross... He said, it's finished. And when he was up on the cross, he said, it is finished. He died for the sins, not just, not, not just my sin, not just your sin, but each and every person who ever lived. He took, the, all, he took all of humanity's sin upon the cross. The lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth were even laid took, this, took your sin, past, present, and future, on the cross. The perfect sacrifice, without fault, without blame, so that you could receive your salvation. Be, be, being, 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 your sins have been completely forgiven, wiped clean. However, it's a gift that you have to receive. You have to receive it. He's not going to force it upon you. He's not going to force it upon you. And when you, when you simply say, Lord Jesus, I receive my forgiveness. He doesn't go to the cross again at that moment. He's already done it. He said, it's finished. You're, you're receiving what he did 2,000 years ago. But in fact, he did it before the foundations of the world were even laid. So he, scripture says, he was the lamb that was slain before the foundations were even laid. Wow. Jesus was not plan B. <laughs> Jesus was not plan B. It wasn't like, oh, shoot, they screwed up. What do we do? We got to come up with something, Dad. You know, the father and the son are having a conversation. No, no, they knew. Like Jesus was slain before, the, before Adam was even created. The Lord for, saw what was going to happen. And in that moment, he saw you. He saw me. He saw today. And he said, my grace is sufficient. Okay? So when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you simply put your faith in him, you don't just get your sins forgiven. You become a new creation. You, the old has passed away. The new has come. In Colossians 1.13, it says you've been transformed, trans, transferred, transformed, transferred, whatever that word was, it kind of morphed, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light of, the, of, 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 of Jesus Christ. You are in a whole other kingdom, amen? You know, and, and Romans 12, too, goes, goes on to say that we get to be transformed to no longer live according to the, the world system, the kingdom of darkness, amen, but we get to live according to the kingdom of light. But that only happens through the renewing of your mind. Then you become transformed, and then you get to prove what is the good, acceptable, perfect will of God. Yep. But, the, but you are responsible for the transformation. Yep. You get to renew your mind. You get to renew your mind by the Holy Spirit and through the Word of God, because the Spirit's going to bring revelation from the Word. Amen? Amen. And as you, become, as you renew your mind, there's a, there is an unlimited amount of transformation that can occur. Amen. Pastor Melissa just said uh, that we should have read some scriptures that talked about us becoming the full measure of Jesus Christ. We, 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 every moment, every day, we have the opportunity to become more and more like Jesus. He already lives on the inside, and he wants to make an appearance on the outside. Amen. <laughs> so every day, every day is a new day for us to, 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 sh to show the glory of the Lord in our life. Every day is a new day. Every day is a new day to be transformed and to bring revelation and confirmation that Jesus is real. By the way you live, by the way you carry yourself, by the way you converse, by the, uh, by the boundless levels of optimism you produce. <laughs> Amen. Because <laughs> there's something. Okay, so this kingdom, 
This kingdom, I man, I, I, I'm just going to cut you the quick here. This kingdom is in you, okay? The kingdom is in you. What's the kingdom? The kingdom of heaven, okay? Praise God, you got the kingdom of heaven in you. The <laughs> Ooh, all right. So Jesus said, this kingdom is in you. Amen. This kingdom is in you. Now, Romans 4.17 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and, and, and joy in the Holy Spirit. All right? That was Romans 4.17. All right. Jesus said, the kingdom is in you. Romans 4.17 says, and if you read that, I don't have time to read all of Romans 4. Some people are like, oh, sometimes I hear people, well, you just picked that scripture out. Of, do you really want me to read every single chapter that I quote a scripture from? We would be here till 4 o'clock, and I'd still let Gary come up, okay? <laughs> if he wanted to, I wouldn't force him to. But you'd be, you'd be missing lunch and dinner. I'm just letting you know, okay? <laughs> so you'd have to bring a snack. Some would be up here like, hey, I've got two fishes. Oh, praise God. Um, we're going to break them up. Read the chapter on your own. Read it on your own. If you don't have a Bible, please let me know. I used to say if you don't have a Bible, download one. If you don't have a Bible, I'll get you a hard copy, okay? Praise God. <laughs> Don't, don't count on the digital. <laughs> Praise God. What? What, Gary? Oh. Read the other one? Well, whatever that one is, it's really good. <laughs> They're all so good. Praise God. If it's wrong, take it down real quick so nobody knows that we made a mistake, Kurt. Oh, there you go, 1417. That 417 is super awesome, too. Super awesome. I'm just throwing that out there. Man, isn't it just awesome knowing I'm so guided by the Holy Spirit, no matter what I do, it's just, like, super accurate. Um, <laughs> what day is it? Gosh. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1417. Gary, it's 1417. I don't know why you said 1417. Anyway, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It happens to the best of us. <clears throat> anyway, back to the message. What's on, Jesus said it's inside you. Romans 1417 says, it's not a matter of what you put in yourself. It's a matter of what comes out of you, okay? It's what's coming out of you. What is in you? What is in you? What does this verse say it's in you? It says, righteousness, peace, and joy are in you. Luke 6, 45, Matthew 12, 35 say, the righteous person brings forth the treasure. We draw it forth from what's in us. We bring it forth. Now, Nehemiah tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength, okay? How many of you want strength? I do, all right? We need, you know, I've heard people say, oh, we're, you know, and the reality is every day we are in a battle of some sort. Every day we're in a, you know, every day, you know, we, it's, we are in a, uh, um, an, we have an opportunity to resist the devil. Every day we have an opportunity to live in righteousness. Every day, every day. And every day you're, you're in the, you know, I could ask you guys what your problem is. What's your problem? You know, in Many of you are going through some type of trial, some type of tribulation, some, something. You know, Jesus said, hey, in this world, you will, have, you will have some problems. But take heart, I've overcome the world. Praise God. So he's already told us that we can expect, hey, you're going to have problems. Oh, wow. We, we, you know, you, you live in a, we live in a fallen world right now. Amen. I got news for you. The devil doesn't run the show, though. Okay? <laughs> the devil doesn't run this show. And if you've been letting him run the show, you need to stop. Okay, you need to stop letting the devil run this show. Well, isn't he the king of the world? No, or the prince of the world? No, he's not. He's, he's, he's got a system that he put in place before Jesus took back the keys. And if we continue to let the, the Babylonian system run the show, we're going to continue to get the, those results. But the Lord Jesus 
conquered sin and death. He took the keys of hell. He took the keys of death. And he says, all power and dominion has been given to me on heaven and on earth. So who's got the power and dominion? Not the devil. No, we do. He's given us the keys. Amen. And we, 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 are, in the, we are in the midst of a spiritual battle. Amen. When do you need, you know, and sometimes we're like, man, pastor, you know, we want to see the breakthrough. We want to see the, the victory. And we forget that the joy of the Lord is our strength. You can't wait for the joy to show up until you see, until you see the evidence of the miracle. Because you're never going to see the evidence of the, you know, you, you need, you're in a battle. You need joy in the middle of the battle, not at the end of the battle. You need strength in the middle of the battle, not at the end of the battle. Today is the day to be strong. Amen. Proverbs tells us that if you faint in, the, in, in, in battle, your faith was weak. If you faint in battle, your faith is weak. Okay. Well, what's an indicator of faith then? If the indicator of your faith is, an indi- is, it, is your joy level. Your joy level is an indicator of your faith. And then I know, like, the, 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 the thing that comes back is a natural for somebody who's not experiencing a whole lot of joy to say, oh, I must not have any faith. No, that's not true. You are loaded with it. You are loaded with it. You are loaded with faith. You have so much faith that you can walk on water. You have so much faith that you can raise the dead. Why, how do I know this? Because the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead resides in you. Because it's, because it's already in you. Because, because John 14, 12, Jesus said, if you believe in him, you're going to do the same things he did and even greater works. That means any believer in Jesus Christ is, has the same power to do the same and even greater. Well, you can't do that without faith. You've got all the faith you need right now. You need to activate that faith. Amen? Your, your faith, the faith, you, you are loaded with the word of God right now. The, the, the Lord has written the word in, his, in your heart, in your spirit. You've got all this power. What you need to do right now is you need to take that word, take the, take the, the truth of the gospel, and renew your mind with it so that your, your born-again spirit can line up with your born-again mind and your born-again body, and you can change the world. Amen? So if you're experiencing a joy deficit, there's good news. Matthew 12, 35 says, the righteous person brings forth the treasure. Guess what you got inside of you? I don't even have to guess. I already told you. You got joy. You, you got it in you. You got joy. You want, to, you want to have strength for the battle. You want to have strength for the day of adversity. You want to have strength to see the, the outcome. You want, to have, you want to have powerful faith. And guess what Paul tells us to do in Philippians? Rejoice. Rejoice. <laughs> you know where Paul was when he was writing this? Oh, he was in jail. Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. <laughs> Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Man. I am going to share a testimony. Some of you listening no one in this room, I'm sure. Some of you listening online may, 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 may doubt this actually happened, but it, it actually happened. Um, we got to, if you go out in our videos, you can see the testimony. Um, one, one Sunday, uh, this is about a year and a half, Avery, was that a year and a half ago already, two, two years ago? Oh, man, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> Last summer or three years ago, one of the two. <laughs> Three months, three years, what's the difference? Uh, we, a, a young, uh, uh, I was sitting in the back in, you know, doing whatever, and it was, service was about to start. Actually, service, had, the worship had started, and I was still f- fiddling around with something. I don't know who, I don't know, drinking a bottle of water or something. And uh, a young man walked into the church, and I had never seen him before, and I, you know, I'm like, hey, you know. Um, and he kind of was walking in, and he kind of walked in a hurry, and the Lord just pressed upon my heart to say, Tell him he's in the right place. So I said, hey, 
He looks at me, I said, the Lord says you're in the right place. And he goes, thank you. Uh -huh, whatever. So, he, you know, I'm just being super honest. I'm like, oh, that was, whatever. That was an interesting interaction. No, don't know what that was about. So I come up here, I preach a message, no idea what I talked about. I mean, I, at the time I did, but I don't remember now. <laughs> no idea what I talked about. I just went, blah, blah, blah. You know, I spoke in tongues for an hour and a half. <laughs> Finished up. No, don't remember what the message was about. Then at the end, I did uh, altar call. Hey, if you need a miracle, come on up to the front. And he actually was sitting, like, right in that front row. So he just kind of, as, as I remember, I think he was sitting right in the front row. So I think he just kind of stood up and was like, I'm here at the altar. <laughs> I need a miracle. I said, great, what do you need? And he's like, my fiancé, girlfriend, uh, was in a coma for like a month at that point, and they basically were saying she was not going to come out of it, and, you know, she was brain dead and blah, blah, you know, just like worst case scenario, you know. And he's like, will you, will you agree with me for a miracle? And I said, well, praise the Lord, yeah, absolutely. And we prayed, and as we were praying in, you know, in an agreement, um, I just really felt impressed, like, hey, is it okay if, we, uh, if me and a couple of others from the church come and lay hands on her at the hospital? And, uh, you know, we believe in the, in, you know, the word says lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And he's like, absolutely. If that's what you feel, you know, just do it. So I talked to Gary and Rosemary. And uh, was it the, day, the next day or the day after that, we, we go to the hospital. And we go up, you know, he meets us in the lobby. And Avery, man. He's like the happiest guy in the world. You know, he, he, he was super happy when he was here. And, you know, it kind of took me back when he's like, yeah, my, you know, he's got this big smile on his face. And he's like, yeah, my girlfriend's in a coma. And, you know, and he's telling me all this stuff. And it's like, well, that's really bad news. But praise God, you're happy. <laughs> and then we, I, I, Gary and Rosemary come with me to the hospital, lay hands on this lady. And I've been around a lot of hospitals, I've been around a lot of death, been around with sick people, you know, it's, you know, just over the years, just, you know, I've been around a lot of stuff. And um, I get up to the room, and I had actually never seen anything quite like this before. There's this young woman, in, in, and I'm walking in full of faith, you know. Uh, you know, if you, anybody has, this was after Project Afterlife, okay? You, know, if anybody's, you guys know the, the TV show Project Afterlife. The, the documentary series I did with uh, Destination America um, about raising the dead. And, you know, and so, and then the movie Dead Razor, if you haven't seen that, blah, blah, blah. So, we, you know, I've been around a lot of, like, miraculous stuff. <laughs> they walk into the room and this, and I'm laughing about it now. But um, I walk in the room and I'm like, yeah, we're going to, you know, this lady's coming out of this coma. And I walk in and boom, I see her. And she is not, she looks more dead than most dead people I've been around. She is so skinny. Her face is drawn in. Her hands are actually twisted up already. Um, she looks like, like just super gaunt. And her eyes are actually open, but they have Vaseline over them, okay, which made it look particularly like, ooh. And her mouth was kind of was like open, but like super dry, and her skin was, I mean, she just looked really, I could go on and on. And I, in my spirit, I kind of went, or not in my spirit, but in my, in my mind, I was like, ooh. Like, oh, this looks bad. Like, it kind of, you know, Mr. Faith was like, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I just started walking by sight. Wow. <laughs> and then behind me, this is what I hear behind me. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. And then Gary and Rosemary just started laughing. Ha, 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 ha. And I'm like... I can hear him behind me. I am seeing her in front of me. I'm like, this is super awkward. <laughs> um, well, he did say I could bring people. You know, because <laughs> I'm just like, I'm, I, am, I am being real. I'm like in a little battle there, a little battle. But they, you know, my, Gary and Rosemary, man, they're just laughing up a storm. And uh, I was kind of like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> just laughed my face, too, I guess. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. You know, so we lay, we lay hands on her, and, uh, we, and, and, and Avery is actually laughing. He's smiling, and he's laughing, too. And I think the, the lady's aunt was there. She was not smiling. She was not laughing. Um, <laughs> and we pray for this lady, and guess what happens in the natural? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Uh, I got a name of Jesus, and we pray, and... But in our spirits, we felt like, ah, we did what we needed to do, man. And I felt that, too, even though I was, like, kind of oh, all over the place on the inside. On the outside, I looked, you know, calm and collected. Um, but I felt in the spirit, like, we did what we needed to do. 
We did what we needed to do, and we demonstrated. And, 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 and for me, I'm, I'm super honestly, like, did I feel like laughing? No. Was I, did I feel super awkward? Absolutely. Was I slightly embarrassed for a few seconds? Yes. Like, that was inappropriate. You know, you're supposed to be, like, super, like, respectful and mournful and not laugh when people look like that. And, but their demonstration of faith, like, laugh, we're going to laugh at this situation, man. We're going to laugh at this. We're, we're, this is not, you know, Gary always says, laugh at the devil. Ha, ha, ha. You know, and so we, we so I, I laughed. Well, ha, ha, ha. You know, it was very forced, <laughs> but it was an act of faith. We prayed for deliverance. We prayed for healing. We did not see a single thing happen in the natural. But I'll tell you what, a month later, that woman was standing in the front of this church giving her testimony. Okay? All right? And she still had her bracelet on her arm. They hadn't even discharged her from the hospital. I, she went from, she went from, n there was zero evidence that, that anything happened in that moment. A couple days later, she's trying to pull her tube out and talk. They, and then, and then, uh, then Avery texts me or calls me or something and says, hey, this is a miracle, this is a miracle. Oh, actually, no, he was up here that Sunday. He came back that Sunday to testify, now I remember. And he said, they said that she's going to learn how to walk. She's only going to need to be in rehab for a year. Boom. Uh, Brother Mel was here. And he jumps out of his chair and he runs up and he says, <laughs> no, don't receive that. She's, gonna be get, she's getting out of that bed and she's walking. And we were said, yeah, in the name of Jesus, she's getting out of that bed. She's walking. We're not satisfied with rehab for a year. Boom. She got out of the bed and she walked. They couldn't, the doctors, the, you know, bless them, bless them, the medical people, they could not figure out how she could recover like that, how she could recover so quickly. But guess what? We stood by faith and not by sight. We, 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 we took it, we took the battle to the devil. And when we didn't see what we thought we were going to see, we didn't say, well, well, I guess that didn't work. Okay? We, we had to, you know, and for me, I, man, I, we had to stand in faith, man. We had to stand and when we didn't see it happen right away, we didn't shrink back. We didn't say, oh, man, that was super inappropriate. Maybe we did something wrong. Oh, we prayed wrong. We did this wrong. No, we contended. We contended. We believed. And I'm telling you, sometimes when we're in the midst of a battle, man, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Paul says to rejoice in everything. You get to rejoice in everything. You're not rejoicing for everything. Oh, ha, ha, this is awesome. I'm sick. Thank you, Lord, for the sickness. No. God's not the, God is not the author of sickness or disease or anything. He is the author of life. He is the author of healing. He is the author of, of abundance. He is the author of blessing. And there comes a time in our lives, and, for, for, it, and it's going to happen. It's going to happen where you don't feel the joy of the Lord. And you're stuck in a situation, or you feel like you're stuck in a situation. But guess what? You have the joy of the Lord. And you got to, you know, like Scripture says, David strengthened himself in the Lord. How do, you, how do you strengthen yourself in the Lord? You get happy. Well, I'm not feeling it. Praise God, you're not, your emotions are not the highest indicator of truth, okay? This may be a breakthrough moment for somebody here. Your emotions are not the highest indicator of truth. I'm letting you know. Praise God. <laughs> It's up to you. Paul says to rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Man, it, and he had to say it twice because he knew we weren't going to believe him the first time. Okay, he had to say it twice because he knew we weren't going to believe him the first time. We get to rejoice in the Lord. We get to prime that pump. Joy is something that we possess, whether we feel it or not. And, and I'm telling you, you can laugh yourself happy, okay? Praise God. And this, this is it. Like, as Christians, we have the opportunity to be happy, to be content in, in, in knowing that God's word is going to happen, that his precious promises are going to be fulfilled. And now is not the time for us to go start s s slipping into depression or f anxiety or fear or all this stuff. And... and, and, and <laughs> I know, how, I know how the devil works, okay? His, his, his stuff never really changes. He just keeps doing the same tricks over and over again. 
I'm just letting you know somebody just got offended and felt, not offended, but you felt condemned because you're like, but I'm afraid and I'm not, I feel condemnation. No, there's no condemnation here, man. You know, and what, what did Jesus say to the, to the son or the, the father who said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Man, you can believe this stuff, but at the same time have doubt. But how do you overcome? In the, in the day of adversity, you overcome by turning yourself to the Lord, fixing your eyes upon Jesus, who is the author and finisher of your faith. He is the author and finisher of your faith. What does it say next? Who went to the cross because of the joy set before him. Okay? The joy set before him. Amen? We have the joy of the Lord. We can face whatever it is we need to face. We can face it, and we can face it with confidence. We can stand firm in the day of adversity because we have the joy of the Lord. We have the strength of the Lord. We have his precious and magnificent promises. He has given us everything we need for life and godliness. It's all in us. Amen? It's all in us. Judy, do you want to come up? It's all in us. When the, if you're facing adversity, if you're facing trial, if you're facing um, whatever it is you're facing, man, I want you to know God's got the, God has a way. He has a way. He has provided you a path to victory. He has provided you a path to peace. He has provided you a path to joy, man. And, man, I, I, I tell you what, we can all, there's, there's times when all of us go, whoa, step back. But you don't keep stepping back. Praise God. You stop and you say, oh, all right, God's got this. His precious promises didn't change because what I saw changed. I'm going to stand in faith, and he is my deliverer. He is my savior. He is the one I put my trust in. I have his perfect peace, perfect peace. That's what Paul said. We're going we're to have perfect peace. Man, thank you, Jesus. Listen, I know you... Oh, come on up. I already did. <laughs> Good night. Oh, I don't know. I thought I did. What day is it? Praise the Lord. <laughs> hey, if you've never given your, your heart to the Lord, today's the day. All right? It's super simple. Scripture says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you shall be born again. Everything changes. You become a new creation in Christ. Old has passed away. The new is here. You get to live a life of freedom and deliverance and victory. And you live, instead of from the outside in, you begin to live from the inside out. And through the power of the Holy Spirit and the revelation of God's word, your mind will become renewed and you will no longer be conformed to this world, but you will be transformed to prove the good and acceptable promises of God, to prove his perfect will in your life. If you've never done that, I just want you to do it with me today right now. Lord Jesus, thank you for forgiving my sins. I confess that you are Lord. I believe you died for my sins. I believe I am forgiven. I believe the Father has raised you again. Come into my heart. I receive my salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If that's the first time you prayed that prayer, we want to talk to you. Please reach out to us no matter where you are. No matter where you are, we want to help you. We want to connect you with people that can help you. We want to connect you with a, a, a vibrant body of local believers who are going to be able to minister to you, minister grace and truth to you in, in, a, in a way that's going to change your life forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So, just picking back up on growing in the Lord and in discipleship, and um, I want to close with a couple things here, and we're going to do prayer ministry. When somebody gives their life to Christ, so if you've already given your life to Christ, that's you're the somebody. Okay, that's me too. When somebody gives their life to Christ, there's a few things they need to do. And this is not all inclusive, but um, 
this is kind of high level. <clears throat> There's a few things you need to do when you give your life to Christ. Number one, you need to stay in fellowship with other believers. Two, you need to renew your mind by reading the Word of God and plugging into the teachings of the church. So you need to be in a mature fellowship, mature teachings, okay? Renew your mind by reading the Word and by receiving the teachings of the Word, you know? And it's got to be a church that teaches out of the Word of God. It backs everything up. I don't want to knock this off. It backs everything up with the Word of God, okay? Because that's our foundation. And then three, establish a firm connection with mature believers. And that's that relationship we were talking about. It's critical. You can have friends. You know, think of like high school. You have friends, but they're your own age. You're all sharing your own you know, mistakes or thoughts, you know, it, you're not necessarily going to the mom and the dad and saying, help me with this. You know, you're going to your counterpart that's 17 and doesn't know, they don't know their right hand from their left either. So it's critical to be in relationship with mature believers. And mature does not mean old. And it does not mean someone who gave their life to Christ a long time ago. Scripture talks about maturity this way in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full, who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So being older doesn't make us mature <laughs> any more than me putting on this suit coat makes me mature. It just makes us look more mature. A sign of godly maturity is a hunger for the word, a respect for other believers, especially your pastors and your elders, and a teachable spirit. So it's not one of those things, it's all of those things. That's a sign of godly maturity. From my experience, the lack of maturing is occurring in the American church because of the culture that's been established in the church at large. Not because you or I chose to not mature, but because we were never told how to grow. In many cases, the importance of the Word of God and the role of the Holy Spirit Spirit were never established in your life. If you're a believer, whether you gave your life to Christ just now, today, or 30, 40, 50 years ago, it doesn't matter. If you've been deprived of any of these critical components, you can't have a successful life in Christ. Or maybe you just didn't even know, you know, you may not have known. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you have that longing, that desire, and you realize there's something missing, or or if you've been if you feel you've been blessed with these advantages, but you want to go deeper, uh, God has put on my heart that um, that there are those you're you're hungering, you're desiring, you know, and for some for a few. It could be that you're very mature and you're desiring to be that ministry to the church. You're desiring to come alongside someone less mature and, and help them hold their hand and help them be stronger. Because again, that's the ministry of the church. We're supposed to be building each other up here. Or it could be that you want to go deeper and you, know, you could be on either side. I'm just calling everybody to come... So if you're online, I want you to reach out to us, okay, so we can equip you and get you plugged in with what you need. Welcome to Victory Center Church. Our goal is to ensure that you stay connected with the church and continue growing in your faith from wherever you are. To do this, we provide a variety of resources, such as our website at ivictorycenter.org, mobile app for Android and iOS, Roku channel, and Apple TV app.
On our website, you can find out more information about our mission and core values. You can also find a brief overview of our current areas of ministry. You can formally join the Victory Center Church family by providing some brief contact information. Additionally, if you would like to be added to our mailing list, you can check the optional checkbox at the bottom. You can view a calendar containing all of our upcoming events on the events page. Additional updates and blog posts can be seen on our news page. If you are unable to visit us in person on a Sunday morning, feel free to watch us online through the live stream page under the media section. The best part of our website is the recordings page, which offers on-demand access to our full catalog of hundreds of videos. All these videos can also be found in the media tab of our app. Tap on a video and press the download button to continue listening to the word offline. Our app also offers the same access to event updates and the live stream posted on our website. If you are interested in a more immersive experience for watching any of our videos, check out our Roku channel and Apple TV app. Victory Center Church offers a way to give from wherever you are. Here's a quick guide on how to give through our mobile app. First, if you have not already downloaded the Victory Center Church app, you'll need to open the app labeled App Store on iOS or the app labeled Play Store on Android. Tap on the search bar and enter Victory Center Church. Tap the Get button on iOS or the Install button on Android, then return home. You can now tap on the new app icon to open our app. To give, tap on the middle button on the tab bar on the bottom. Tap the zero in the center of the screen and a number pad will slide up for you to enter an amount. After that, you can tap the frequency at which you would like to give the selected amount. You can swipe left to reveal more options. Tap the next button and you'll be redirected to your phone's browser to complete the payment. You can choose to continue by signing up with an email or using your pre-existing Facebook account. Enter in all the applicable information and tap sign up. You'll then need to confirm your account by going to the Mail app. Tap the email from Subsplash with a subject which reads, Welcome. Then tap the Confirm Email Address button. This will redirect you back to the browser where you can finish setting up your account by linking it to a credit or debit card or a bank account. Upon entering the required information, tap Link. You can then finish your gift by tapping the Give button on the bottom of the screen. Giving online at Victory Center has never been easier. Here's a quick tutorial on how to get started. First, open a browser such as Google Chrome or Safari. Type ivictorycenter.org in the search bar and hit enter. You will see the homepage of our website. Next, click the top right tab in the navigation bar labeled Giving. You will be redirected to a page where you can start filling out your payment information. Start by clicking the zero in the center of the screen and typing your amount. Then select the phone you would like to give to by clicking on the round button with the default title of General. In the drop down, you can choose from a list of our current funds. Then choose the frequency at which you would like to give the selected amount by clicking on one of the listed options. More options can be revealed by clicking and dragging left or right. After confirming your information, click Next. You'll be redirected to our payment processing provider's website called Subsplash. You can choose to create an account with an email or pre existing Facebook account. Additionally, if you already have an account, you can click on the user icon in the top right and select the login option. If this is your first time giving, select on one of the two options provided to sign up. Fill in the required information, then click sign up. You'll then need to confirm your account by going to an email provider such as Gmail. Tap the email from Subsplash with the subject which reads welcome. Then tap the confirm email address button. This will bring you to a web page which confirms your account. To finish, go back to the tab with the original payment and refresh it. You may need to re-enter your payment info. After doing so, click next. This will direct you to a page where you can finish setting up your account by linking it to a credit or debit card or a bank account. Upon entering the required information, click link. You can then finish your gift by clicking the give button on the bottom of the screen. 